Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Daz Reacts, and today I am reacting to some Jimmy Carr, and this is volume one of his riskiest jokes ever told. And I've been watching a lot of Anthony Jesselnik over the last couple of weeks, and it's made me want to watch Jimmy Carr more. I know just how ruthless Jimmy Carr can be. I, I know what to expect from this video, but at the same time, I really don't know what to expect because I've not seen all of his stand-ups. I've seen snippets here and there. I've seen like some of the YouTube shorts or TikTok videos and things like that, but I don't think I've ever sat and watched one all the way through. So I don't really know what to expect from this. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you enjoy it. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And if there is anything that you want me to react to, leave it in the comments down below and I will get round to it. But let's get into this. your bed is embarrassing as a child. But as an adult, <laughs> wetting a child's bed is mortifying. <laughs> it's almost impossible to explain that shit away. <laughs> I bought a rape alarm, because I kept on forgetting when to rape people. <laughs> already, already with two jokes in, and already I know that this, this is going to be one of them videos that's going to leave my mouth so I know it, my cheeks. Bloody marvellous. When I was a kid, I was scared of the dentist. He was a paedophile. <laughs> I suppose that begs the question, how many fillings did he give me? <laughs> <laughs> Islamic fundamentalist sex dolls. Do they blow themselves up? <laughs> In Palestinian passports under occupation, do they just put Israel? <laughs> He's only there to test where the Guardian readers are sitting. <laughs> no further questions. Back to the knob gags. <laughs> I met an incredible girl on the internet. Smart, sexy, uninhibited. Of course, it turned out to be a 12-year-old paraplegic boy. <laughs> I'll be honest, the sex was disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that joke. I, re I already knew that one. But, yeah, the, it's, it's, it amazes me how, like, he gets away with saying the things that he does. It doesn't amaze me because it is the case, like, freedom of speech, you get to say what you want. It's, it's, a, it's a comedy show that that's how it's supposed to be. What amazes me is the likes of Netflix will sign him up to do shows while he's like this, and it ends up on all the streaming platforms. But, yeah, I love it. Oh, <laughs> I think we've reached a barrier there, haven't we? <laughs> Hang on, we will laugh at that and nothing more. <laughs> well, fair enough. I don't want to make a big deal of this, but I recently adopted a newborn African child. He was just seven pounds, plus postage and packing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> if only they put holes in that box. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And that is the joke, interestingly, that Richard Curtis said was a bit much for the comic relief gig. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. When I was younger, I couldn't talk to women because I was hiding in their wardrobes, masturbating. <laughs> well, not totally surprised away. With him. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've written a rom-com. I wanted to tell you about this. I've written a romantic comedy. It's about a guy and a girl, a classic. Yeah. Initially, they hate each other. Classic. But they end up in bed together. Classic. It's called The Rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the story about Gary Glitter? There was a GCSE music question about Gary Glitter. How bad's that? How bad's that? A GCSE music question about a Gary Glitter song. Because if there's one artist you don't want associated with the phrase, shh, turn over, you've got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I should probably leave Glitter alone. He just wants to settle down and have kids. <laughs> I said to my girlfriend, I said, um, I said, you want to experiment with a role play rape fantasy? She said, no. <laughs> I said, that's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like I said, I love Jimmy Carr, and I, I think he's brilliant, but I can already feel like my my face is starting to, like, stay in one place now. <laughs> I'm smiling, knowing that... I don't even know what jokes are coming, but I'm smiling, and I just know that they're going to be so far below the belt, but I'm still going to find them funny. Rape is such a horrible word, though. It's such a harsh, brutal, awful word. Rape. That's why I prefer to call it a struggle snuggle. <laughs> 
<laughs> you couldn't stay mad at a struggle, Snugglist, could you? <laughs> Bloody adorable. A lot of people like to smoke cigarettes after sex, but you can't buy cigarettes until you're 16, so I have to get them for both of us. It always amazes me, like, with comedians like him and even, like, with Anthony Jeselnik, that do you think that, like, the old Bill, like, the police have actually looked at these and thought, maybe we need to be looking into him a little bit further and, like, maybe investigating because he's coming up with jokes like these that there's got to be something more in it. I just... You think it's wrong I'm buying a 15-year-old girl cigarettes? <laughs> you think it's wrong I'm fucking her? <laughs> I'm kidding. Kidding does sound like a verb for child abuse, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you joking or touching kids? <laughs> Obviously, it's a family show. <laughs> I've noticed a thing. I go out to see a lot of comedy shows, and I've noticed a thing. Comics tend to do their best stuff right at the end of the gig, and then they leave the audience wanting more. Sounds good, doesn't it? But it doesn't make any sense. Because you, the audience, are left wanting more, and the comedian has fucked off. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So what I'd like to do, because I've given it some thought, I'd like to torpedo this gig with some very unpleasant jokes <laughs> that will offend and upset you all. <laughs> yeah. And then you can all leave thinking, thank fuck that's over. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Let's begin. So kind. If women are so good at multitasking, is it too much to ask? Tickle my balls while you work the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> half a joke, half public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I often get asked, are you ever going to get married? I don't think I ever will get married. I mean, you can't get married at 16 without parental consent. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. They still think she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it, it always makes me think that like for every single one of his shows there's got to be someone there that doesn't really know who jimmy carr is they've maybe just gone into his show on a whim if there's tickets available or whatever and they've sat down and he's told like two or three jokes and they're like no no they just get up and fuck off that that's an unfortunate reaction because that's only there to warm you up for this one <laughs> Did you all read that story about the girl that was kidnapped and kept in squalid conditions for 18 years? Did you read that story? Was I the only one that read that story and thought, 18 years in squalid conditions? Have a tidy round. <laughs> Make a house a home, you lazy bint. <laughs> Say what you like about the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They can work to a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> it's only words, nothing bad's happened. It's not like I've drop kicked a kitten into an orphan's face. Once, I did that once. <laughs> and it was fucking funny, but you sort of had to be there. Oh, this man is a... <laughs> I think I've sorted out the credit crunch. I thought you'd be pleased. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely, I think I've sorted out the credit crunch. You know what the problem is with, it, with the credit crunch? As I, as I, in layman's terms, OK? The trade, the turnover, the cycle of business isn't happening in the way it was because businesses and banks and countries have gone bust and no-one trusts each other. So how are we going to repair this? How are we going to get things started again, get that virtuous circle up and running? I'll tell you what we do. We build a World Trade Centre. I can see you sat there with your arms crossed thinking that's going to be a fucking big building. <laughs> We're going to have two of them. <laughs> I saw the chief of the New York City police on the news. Ah, oh, he's messed up. He said, we will never forget 9-11. I thought, what's your fucking home not your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, this man is killing me. Police on the news. <laughs> he said, we will never forget 9-11. I thought, what's your fucking home? Not your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's brilliant. 
I do love doing these gigs. I mean, I'm so glad I, I, I recorded the DVD in Glasgow, but the, the, it, these gigs, just the fact that everyone sort of shares a sense of humour, that's such a sort of special thing. Everyone appreciates as well. Everyone gets it. <coughs> everyone in this room gets the fact it's just jokes. We're just messing around, trying to have a laugh together. It's just messing, you know. These jokes aren't who I am. I'm actually, I mean, in the real world, I'm quite a generous sort of person. So I realise that makes me sound like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm quite a giving sort of person. I mean, last year I donated a kidney. Yeah. Of course, they wanted to know where I got it from. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's still warm. Keep it. <laughs> <laughs> I often get asked, someone asked earlier, a favourite joke or rudest joke. Um, I got asked in Liverpool last year, someone said, uh, favourite pub joke. Someone shouted out at the end of the show. So I thought I'd end by telling you my favourite pub joke. It's quite a rude joke. I think you all knew it was going to be fairly rude. <coughs> but I'll tell you, and then I'll tell you why I'm telling it. Um, I, I got asked, favourite favorite pub joke in Liverpool, and uh, so I said, I told my favourite pub joke, what's the difference between football and rape? Girls don't like football. <laughs> that is a textbook response, Glasgow. <laughs> it's a laugh followed by a ooh. <laughs> the interesting thing for me is that that's not two distinct groups of people. There's not one group laughing and another group going, ooh. Those are the same people. <laughs> that joke makes you a little bit schizophrenic. Because <laughs> you don't choose what you laugh at. I'm sure many of you have been disgusted at what you've been laughing at this evening. But you don't choose what you laugh at. It's like a reflex. You just laugh. And then another bit of you kicks in and goes, what the fuck are you doing laughing at that? <laughs> ooh. So I told it in Liverpool. It got a laugh and then a ooh. And then there was a pause. And a woman at the back went, I like football. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that being your problem with that joke. <laughs> she clearly had time to think, well, we all like it rough once in a while. <laughs> He's got us there. <laughs> but I also enjoy soccer. <laughs> now I'm taking a stand. <laughs> Well, as I say, it's been a pleasure performing in Glasgow. I mean, the reason we did the DVD here is because it's sort of the, one of the best gigs of the year. I just, I fucking love it. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, just a couple of... Just one quick thing before I go. If anyone wants an autograph or to say hello after the show or to get fingered or to have a fight... <laughs> whatever you would like, I'll be down there in that corner. I'm more than happy to wait as long as it takes. Thank you so much for coming out to see me and I'll see you all again next year. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, good night. Thank you. You know what, honestly, see this man, I can... Uh, the majority of his jokes, they disgust me to the <laughs> to the point where it is the same. The laugh inside is a reflux, and then you'll think to yourself, like, why the hell am I laughing at this? And he could tell that joke again, and you're going to laugh at it again, you're going to laugh at it again. And the, the bottom line is, it's because it's funny. And, and this man is so funny for what he does. He is brilliant, and I could watch him over and over again. And I plan on watching a lot of him on this channel because he's he's unique they're like you get so many comedians that they'll all come out and they'll talk about their families and their kids and they go through their life stories and things like that and that's fine that's nice one of my one of my best comedians my favorite comedians is lee evans and that's what he does but he does it so well but when you get a comedian like this that you know that from one joke to the next it's going to be oh is this going to be above the belt below the belt so far below the belt you can't even see the fucking belt that's that's what i love about him and that's what i love about his comedy and i will always watch him and i will always find him funny and people will watch him and think ew, no i can't watch that no that's too much i love him if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button i will be uploading daily and you can expect to see a lot more jimmy carr i will see you in the next one <laughs>